another terrific Thursday. I'm Bob and this is Brush Up on Bob with EMS. Today we're going to be talking about a thing as you can kind of see that's going around me. There's some rain in the background and during this time of year with rain and people being outside they could develop environmental emergencies and today we're specifically talking about hypothermia. Okay when the wind starts blowing and we start getting wet we're going to start having evaporation and evaporation is going to start cooling the body. Now naturally when we sweat as I'm doing up here because it's kind of humid out here the evaporation cools our body but when we're soaking wet with that cool water coming down from the sky that's going to cool our bodies down and it's going to cool our temperature below our core temperature which everybody know what that is? 98.6 degrees. Okay, and so when our temperature drops, your heart, nervous system, and other organs are not going to function normally. So left untreated, this hypothermia is going to become a serious, it starts out mild, then moderate, then severe. Okay, and so we're going to talk about those little things today about what are the difference between mild, moderate, and severe hypothermia and how can we prevent that. So what is hypothermia? Well, hypothermia, basically by definition, is anything that drops your core body temperature below 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and that in Celsius, for those of you who really care, 35 degrees Celsius. And when those start dropping, we're gonna get signs and symptoms of mild hypothermia, which is gonna show some lethargy, so they're gonna be sleepy, tired, and some confusion. The colder the body gets, the more confused a person gets until we get to an altered mental status to the point that we probably get to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit when they become unresponsive. That's why when we talk in code blues, we want to make sure that they're not cold and dead until they're warm and dead. So we want to make sure that we're warming them up while we're doing that active CPR. Okay? And starting to downpour here as you can hear behind me. Okay? So symptoms of hypothermia, while we're looking for hypothermia, initial hunger and nausea will give away to apathy to the core body temperature, okay? So they're gonna be, kind of be hungry because that body's burning fuel inside, creating energy, and energy creates heat. And so they're gonna start shivering, right? And this is followed after that by confusion, that lethargy, slurred speech, kind of like a stroke, so kind of keep that in your differential diagnosis loss of consciousness all right and then finally when it gets too low they're gonna fall asleep possibly die so keep in mind the paradoxical action of it when you get to that patient you need to get their clothes off them because as I go out here if I was to go out here I would be soaking wet okay that wet is not going to allow me to dry very easily Okay, especially when it's continuing to rain. And if it starts blowing like our normal Kansas winds do, we're gonna start getting that evaporation and convection and that blowing, that wind chill, and we're gonna start cooling the body down, okay? Just like an air conditioner, you think about an air conditioner, we're gonna have some type of cooling element, and then you're gonna have air blowing over that cooling element. Think about your body. You got that water on there, you're cooling your body down, okay? That is hypothermia there in a nutshell. So hypothermia that is mild is anything that is less than 95 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're between 95 to 98, you're still compensate. Well, it's kind of like compensated, decompensated, and irreversible when we talk in shock with hypothermia. So mild hypothermia, when we're less than 95 degrees between 90 and 95, that's mild hypothermia. And they're going to present with shivering, a tachycardic heart rate, that means fast, a tachycardic respiratory rate and the contraction of blood vessels they're closing down trying to shunt that warmth to the core okay they are going to have increased urine production due to the cold okay remember when you get in the shower and that cold water hits you you automatically feel like you got to go to the bathroom right then and there because that's your body's natural reaction okay they're gonna have some mental confusion and they're also going to have a little bit of hypoglycemia because remember that sugar being used for the energy because ATP they're going to be going more hypoglycemic because they're using the sugar so check a blood sugar on these hypoglycemic patients okay next moderate moderate is anything 90 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit so 90 to 86 I like to say 90 to 85 because we go with fives right 
fives are easy in EMS. So 90 to 85 degrees is moderate. That's when the shivering becomes more violent. Their muscles miss coordination, so they can't really walk very well. They're moving all around. Uh, their movements are more slow and labored. Okay, and they're gonna stumble. Those are the umblings. So we're gonna have the mumbles, the stumblings. The um, they're they're we gotta be confused. Their lips, ears, fingers, and toes might become blue at this point. Okay, we're gonna start having late stages of that frostbite starting to occur. If it doesn't get taken care of, that frostbite on any extremities. It's gonna turn that black and that waxy color and we're probably not gonna be able to save it. There's a possibility, but we don't know, okay? And then severe hypothermia is anything that is less than 86 degrees. This normally happens with the 30s in temperature. However, this could happen if long enough out in a rainstorm, snowstorm, those kind of things, okay? This is when all functions stop, okay? They become unconscious. Usually their heart rate and respiratory rate and blood pressure decrease and eventually it stops. And so the patient no longer is alert and with us. And so they're unconscious, unresponsive. And so we need to start bringing them around. Um, and that's why they're not dead until they're warm and dead, okay? So remember, we need to start warming them up. So crank up that heat in the back of the ambulance. Number two, get them undressed, get them out of that wet clothing, okay? And then start warming. If you can, put some heat packs where they're carotid and stuff like, just like when you cool them down, okay? But you wanna be careful not to actively, you don't want to put it directly on the skin, okay? You want kind of a indirect warmth happening. Wrap them up in several blankets. Put some heat packs over the blankets. Get them, get them warm enough, but not directly on that skin, okay? We also don't want to do any rubbing or massaging, especially in this severe condition or with frostbite, because if we do that, there's little ice crystals that have formed under the skin, and those ice crystals can start tearing tissue underneath the skin, causing damage, causing uh, different lacerations and tears in the tissue, in the muscle, and it's gonna be worse off uh, for them than if it was if you just let it and let it thaw naturally, okay? Um, alcohol, alcohol poses a risk to hypothermia. So think about you're drunk on a day like today, it's 60 degrees out, it's raining with the wind blowing, Okay, alcohol does not warm people up. They say, oh, I feel so warm from it. But alcohol poses them at a risk for hypothermia because why? Alcohol is a vasodilator, okay? So with that vasodilation, we're letting that heat out. Just like when we get hot, we vasodilate, okay? So we're increasing blood flow to the skin extremities, letting that heat go. We're causing the person to have heat loss. They have a feeling of feeling warm, but they're losing heat loss. Between 33 to 73% of hypothermia cases are complicated by alcohol, so think about that. So today we've talked about a couple different things. We've talked about the different cases of hypothermia, what hypothermia is, the definition anything less than 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and then also what to do for treatment for hypothermia, and finally, why alcohol is not important and, and should not be uh, a good warming agent uh, when going out on a hunt or uh, other types of activities in the winter time or cold weather because it can definitely decrease your body heat and you're going to have that cooling effect okay that's why drinking a beer in the summertime feels really good because that cooling effect you're, you're releasing that heat uh, when it's really hot so, thanks for watching another Brush Up on Bob. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'm going to sit out here and enjoy some more of the rain. We'll see you guys later.